Hey everyone, bit of a different intro this week. Usually I'd start with some off cut from before or after recording the podcast that I thought was funny. But this week, the games media tragically lost Ryan Davis from Giant Bomb. Now, the Giant Bomb cast was probably the biggest influence on me to actually start the GSC podcast. So I wanted to leave a little note here before this podcast just saying, you know, you will be missed, buddy. And with that out of the way, uh, I hope you enjoy the show. What's up, people? Welcome to the GSC Podcast. I'm your host, Lauchi. This week, I'm joined by Johnny. Hello. JBC. Evening. Hello. And Jenny Spagnoli. Hello. What's going on, people? It's wow. good. Do you like Johnny. I reverted, yeah. I reverted back to it after popular demand, man, by you guys and no one else. Yay. <laughs> what, what is up? It's all, it's all hot. It's all hot. It is sticky hot, isn't it? So when we put this, when we put the, uh, when we put the podcast in some sort of time capsule, <laughs> it's just, it's just how you, it's July, and it's sunny and it's sweaty. <laughs> that happens. Which means Ben's arms look like fried chicken legs right now. They do. <laughs> they smell a bit like fried chicken as well, and because I'm ah. fat, they've got like fried chicken texture. <laughs> that's that's just because you're having an affair with the Brano's manager. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Let's start, as we always do, people, with uh, what we've been doing this week. So, Johnny, you're up first. What have you been up to this week, dude? I know, been enjoying the weather, been cycling, playing yeah, some video you've games. Yeah, cycling about, man. Being active. Yeah, yeah I actually was active you yesterday. You should invite me to be active with you, and then maybe I could lose fat. <laughs> and no one <I'm> cares. <laughs> 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 All right, what, what have you been up to video game-wise? That's mean. Um, I completed Castlevania since the other night on the Vita. Awesome game. Um, what else have I been doing? Uh, I bought Sonic Generations in a Steam oh, yeah, sale. Oh yeah, that game. It's good. Good. Uh, I, Sonic's dead to me, man. Until they make a good Sonic <laughs> game again, which the uh, the new one looks to be. Lost World. Yeah. We're split right down the middle on Generations, aren't we, Johnny? It's I, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I love Generations. I think it's a fantastic game. It's a good step in the right direction. Wait, I, want to carry I loved half of it, but uh, yeah. The, I liked the, all of it. The old school Sonic stuff, yeah, Jenny? Yep. If I could fist bump you right now, it would happen. Virtual high five. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, so you guys even like the new Sonic stuff in that then? Yeah, I think it's not as bad as you think. You know, it, it controls well. Did not just make you cringe every time you see his other animal friends? Not really. You, well, you're gonna play as Sonic anyway. Oh, but... I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh, I hate them, man. Oh. What they need to do is just go back to just Sonic and Tails. Yeah, you can maybe have Knuckles, maybe. That's not like definite, but just be Sonic and Tails, and get rid of all the other shit animals, man. Because those animals are crap, all of them. Hey. Is there any of them that you like other than Sonic, Tails, and maybe Knuckles? I don't even uh, remember any of them. Shout out, Big the Cat. That, that guy. Big the Cat and his fishing rod. Yeah. It was, Did you ever uh, actively choose to play as Big the Cat, though? Would you ever actively choose to play as Big the Cat? I would never actively. Nobody would choose to play as him because <laughs> he sucks, man. <laughs> what else have you been up to? Um, That is pretty much it. A little bit of Awesome Noughts. I play that perfunctorily, but, you know. All right, that's sweet, it. man. Cool. Jamie, what have you been up to this week, dude? I'm three weeks behind, but I finally finished The Last of Us. Oh, oh shit. That kind of happened this morning. Nice. Um, Jenny, so have, spoilers. Yeah, before we, before we continue, Jenny, have you finished it yet? He hasn't, no. Nope. Oh, so we can't talk about the ending. It's well, I can, I can disappear. <laughs> how far uh, did you get, Jenny? Yeah, how far are you? Uh, I don't think I'm that far, to be honest. Okay. I, this I is can't actually remember. <laughs> All right, well... <laughs> Dedicated. If we if we dodge spoilers, then what did you think of it, Jay? I uh, it's up there. I'm not like like because you guys when you finished it, you were just like, oh my god, game of the year, just straight away. Yeah, it like, is. I still think that now. Yeah, like I'm. I think I need to digest a little, let it rumble around in my tummy a little, and just have a little bit of fun in there first. But no, I'm happy with it. I've not come away anything other than happy. I'm I'm 
I'm, I feel great. It's good. It, it works. <laughs> it works because you're actually an Uncharted fan as well, right? So, how do you feel it's stacked up against the Uncharted games? Because this this I, is one that I had to mull over. Do you know what though? Apart from the the aiming and a couple of bits of yellow to indicate that you had to jump somewhere, I didn't really. Yeah, you know, I just kind of forgot they were the same thing, like the same people. Yeah. Um. Which game? Which game did you enjoy more? I guess is what I'm asking. Between the Last of Us and the Uncharted games. I think Last of Us is better than Uncharted One and Two. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I think I'd have to go back through all three Uncharted games in one. See, I th- yeah, I mean, this to me was when when I talk about say things like The Walking Dead being like my favorite TV show, this kind of fits in with that, and it's good, but it's more of a movie than the Uncharted games were. Yeah, I I feel well. I don't know actually. I mean, the Uncharted games felt a lot like Indiana Jones films, right? They had that same sort of flavor to them, right? Yeah. Whereas The Last of Us, The Last of Us <laughs> really does feel like a show like The Walking Dead. Like it could easily be a show like The Walking Dead, you... and I think it would be incredibly popular if it was. But... Do you come away thinking more more like when you finished Heavy Rain or something like that? I know they're totally different games, but I, I imagine like the story driven game, you know because it's so yeah story driven and you're more emotionally involved I'd, I'd say would that not be a fair comparison well uh, i'd say heavy rain without giving too many spoilers or too much in the way of spoilers heavy rain has a much more black and white ending than the last of us does well considering heavy rain has 22 endings and this has one it's going to be yeah, a bit different as well it, they're not they're not all that radically different are they heavy rain's endings no no but i think where we're talking about Gianni's point though as well, you go through heavy rain and you make decisions in that game. Yeah. Or your gameplay style, if you're not very good, can affect the ending as well. But with The Last of Us, you're told you know, you're just this is it. Yeah. It's that's on true. the rails. But my God, it's a bumpy ride. Well, it's, it's... it's worth it, and it shows that it is worth it, man. That like studios should just put their foot down and be like, no, you know, we've got a narrative to tell you, like, and you're going to enjoy it. And like most people are like, oh, no, I won't enjoy it. I'd rather choose or whatever. But if they'd have put choices and stuff in Last of Us, I don't think it would have worked as well. So It wouldn't be the same thing. It wouldn't work, no. I think more devs should have the balls to just stand up and say, do you know what? This is the game we're making. Like, Just trust us and take a chance on it, and we promise you'll enjoy it. Like, well, like you said last week as well, there was a lot of uproar about the ending in this game, and I'm not going to talk about what actually happens. But I, I really enjoyed it. It yep. was fitting for me. Exactly. It, it I worked. thought it didn't fit the game perfectly. So if people are disappointed with the end of the game, then I'd really like to find out why and have a proper little chit-chat about it because well, I think it couldn't have gone any other way. We can we can properly debate it when Janny finishes it. So, so as, intrigued now. As soon as Janny finishes the game, we'll, we'll have a good debate on the ending of The Last of Us at some point. Maybe yeah. in a separate video, like just a short end of Last of Us spoiler cast or something we'll do. Yeah, let's have a mass debate about it. <laughs> Me and Johnny have been doing that for like two weeks. We're going to have yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Sorry. But no, it's oh I'd see this is it. Once Gianni's finished it, I can talk about the bits I want to talk about. There's some stuff later on in the game that when I felt it might have started to feel a bit rusty, it just flips it all upside down. Just says fuck this shit and gives you something new to do. Yep. And then I something exactly new again. The bit you're talking about, there's, man. Yeah. There's a I couple know. of bits that just keep changing up towards the end and you think if you'd have spread this out a bit more earlier on, it might not have got a bit dry in the middle. But no, it's it still had the story to dry. I get it. the feeling that that's where Janny is right now. He's sat right in the dry patch in the middle of the game. It's that lull, isn't it? And it's like, yeah. it's a hurdle. Can you get over that hurdle? And if you can, then it delivers a fantastic story. The game gets stronger. I remember where I am. I think I just got the shotgun and I haven't moved from there. Oh, so you are literally like basically in what I would call like the third act then of the game okay all right yeah because the game is surprisingly long as well yeah it's about i think my my game time clocked in at about 14 hours yeah 10 hours 22 minutes oh so you blazed through (laughs) you playing on easy yeah of course i was (laughs) (laughs) i did loads of unlocks and stuff get off me i didn't get many unlocks at all when i was playing it i was just getting raped a lot of the time man by human adversaries more than infected man Mm, yeah they were the they were the issue but then they were also what what drove some um 
some real some real emotional moments as well. Yeah, definitely. And Nolan North. I didn't even notice it was him until Did you I not? the credits. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Did you pick him straight away? Yeah, but I knew he was in there, so I was listening out. So. Whoops. I didn't know who he was going to play, but I knew he was in there. So. So as soon as as soon as he showed up, you were like, right, that's Nolan North then. Yeah. See, I had no idea. I couldn't pick his voice out, man. And then in the credits, I was like, what? That was Nolan North? That's crazy. But then you couldn't pick him up as the penguin. Pick Not up a all. penguin. Lol. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think I have two favourite bits in the game. And one of them's later on. I don't want to talk about it because of, because of Gianni. But the <laughs> earlier on, so when, you're, um, when you meet Bill and you're looking for the car parts. Oh, yeah. So before that, when you get hung upside down. Yeah, that was fun. That that talk about gravity working. That was amazing. That's fucking terrifying, man. Yeah, because there are bits in like say Tomb Raider this year as well where you get hung upside down, but that doesn't. You've got this one. You really had a sense of fear. Like, well, it's not too bad, right? You're hanging upside down and you're like, okay, well, this okay, I can do this. And you're shooting off the runners, and then you hear the fucking clickers, and you're like. Fuck. What makes, what am I gonna what makes do? it scary is your limited ammo. Like I yeah. was constantly but, worrying that I was going to run out of ammo, and like yeah. that's it. Well, it that was my worry. Yeah, it wasn't cause... even just that. Like you're worried about them getting you. You're more worried about Ellie over there trying to get you down. I yeah. didn't give a shit. I was like uh... running towards her. Like no. I was more. I was like Johnny. I was more worried that my ammo. I was going to use it all, and then I don't know what was coming next. And that yeah. was that was, I was more scared because my ammo. Terrifying. I can't yeah. protect myself. Mm. Oh, yeah, I played most of the game with a brick, like I said, so I wasn't too worried about afterwards. Yeah, I was putting the stranglehold on him. <laughs> I had bricks too. I was laying the <laughs> smack down. But yeah. <laughs> but that'll do. Yeah? Not yeah, do anything I think else? I did loads of other things, but I've, I've spilled on too much. I don't want to talk. Oh, we love <laughs> listening to you talk. Oh, well. Do you? We do. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh, well. I get, I get you moist in your gooch. That's what's going All the on. time. Every Whoa. Time. <laughs> like a river down there, man. That's why he's, why he's wearing no it. pants, just to let, <laughs> it, let it run free. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I... Okay, just to finish for my part then, let's just say that in previous weeks, I've always been talking about PlayStation Plus. I've actually bothered to buy it now, so... First impressions Yay. of PlayStation Plus? It's, um, I, what the hell? I was saying to Johnny off, off air that... Um, you know, I'd normally pick up a new game at 40 quid and then be done with that in 10 hours. And like, okay, if it's good, but Jesus Christ, I've just downloaded like seven or eight games just now. Yep. Yeah, man. And that's and just that's... this month. I'm not going to get to play them all this every, month. Every month it swaps out. The thing is, the trick for PlayStation Plus is, if you're going to be a member for a long time, hit download on everything and then cancel it just so that it goes into your download history. That's what I've done. Download yeah. it whenever you want then. Do you want another because, pro tip? Yeah. Go on then. Do what I did and get a terabyte. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if we were earlier in the PlayStation 3's life, I would have probably done that. But, I mean, once PS4's out, the PlayStation 3 just becomes the bedroom Blu-ray player. So, never mind. Yeah. And, there's, and nice. the rumour is um, DMC's next year, uh, next month, isn't it? It's going to be free next month. Yeah, yeah. we were talking DMC. about that, that post. Yeah, Sweet super way. excited yeah. for that, man. It's I good. still want to play that. Well, the plus side is, did you buy a year subscription? I did get indeed, it. so I get Drive Club. Yeah, exactly. You get Drive Club and you get like the first nine months of your PS3 online. Lol. Good times. Cool. What? You have to pay to play online, don't you? You have to have PlayStation Plus to play online on PS4. Yeah, not not PS3 though. Did right? I say PS3? You, you might have, yeah. Lol! I suck. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Go on, man. Yeah, go on, Gianni. Go on, Jenny. Give it to us. Uh, did it quickly. I 100%ed Thomas was alone. Whoop! Um, sweet man amazing that's a thing actually played it on the Vita <laughs> and then went back on PS3 and did it all over again really uh, so good yeah um, I did 100% it on both but um, the trophies track the same anyway uh, played that oh before um, before you move on mate I think uh, your tweet where you took a screenshot of your 100% and tweeted it to Mike Bithell that was a nice touch man yeah, man. If I made That's... that game, I would love to have people sending those to me. You know, as a, I've, I've spoken about it for like three or four weeks now, but it is a truly, it's just a great little game. It's just, yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. And I will pick it up and play it again. I haven't deleted it off my Vita. Um, I will play it again. Nice. Um, so moving on from that, I, yeah, Ben, before I continue. Yeah. 
Are you actually recording this? <laughs> um, yes. Yes, I am. Woo! Yes, I am. <laughs> We're all good. No worries. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I had to right. check. I was like, I'm pretty sure I set it up. I'm fairly sure it's set up. It's working. No worries. Fantastic. Okay. You are cool to carry on, man. Right. The <laughs> questions come up twice. And I was like, I need to get this in. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, apart from Thomas was alone, I started playing Ratchet and Clank All for One, I think it's called. Um, on the PS3. On the PS3, because we did make a mistake when we said that we were surprised that Ratchet and Clank hasn't been included in the PlayStation Plus games, because it has. It was like one of the first, um, well, not one of the first, but one of the first I downloaded. Um, How not, is that? It's, it's a bit hack and slashy. Um, it's a bit button bashy, even, even well, I should say. All for one, all for one's a brawler, isn't it? It's like a four player co op brawler. Yeah, it borrows from a lot of other games, I'm feeling. Um, I, I'm guessing this isn't the strongest one in the franchise. By all uh, accounts, it's supposedly one of the worst, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's considered the uh, the awful one. Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense then. I mean, you know the cutscenes look amazing, but it, it, it's a little bit glitchy and stuff. But no, it's it's a solid game, I suppose. But I, how do you I'm find pro- how are you finding the characters? Oh, I, I do like the character characterization of them. They, they, they're, they're, their interactions and um, well, the cutscenes are pretty funny anyway. So as a bargain game, I'd say get it. Um, if there's and I think it'd be much more enjoyable if there was three other people playing at the same time. Um, a bit like. A bit like Castle Crashers in that sense, like you know, it's just, it's a solid game, but it's more fun. With, I, I have a feeling it'll be more fun with more people in it. It's, that's that's pretty much the same for all brawlers, isn't it, man? It, it really is a case of like the more the merrier, man. The more people you've got playing, the more fun you're going to have. Yeah, I mean, it does borrow quite a lot from Lego from the Lego series. Like you go around destroying stuff, picking up bolts, and then you can you sell those bolts for like add-ons and stuff. Uh, or weapons and stuff. So I suppose it differs in that sense. But there's just mm, so much. Always... I don't know. That's that's been the case in all the Ratchet and Clank games, though, man. Like, oh really? Yeah, you collect nuts and yeah. bolts and then uh, buy your weapon upgrades with them and stuff. So yeah. All right. Well, I, 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 there's definitely similar. There was a similarity that I I got between the two. So whoever did it first um, could be quite pissed off with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, for free. I'm not, again. I'm not complaining. I suppose it's. Uh, I'm just playing through that. Now I'm just waiting for the rest of them to download. <laughs> oh, and The Cave. That was the other game I've been playing. Uh, you finished it, didn't you? Well, I did finish a playthrough. Um, yeah, it's... it's a, from the sounds of things, it's a shame that it's basically... that. First of all, there's seven characters, right? Yeah. And there's three per team, per playthrough. So you literally have to play it through three times for to get all seven endings. Which is a little bit annoying, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a nicely done. The puzzles are. I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed by the difficulty on the puzzles. They were a little bit too simple. Um, apart from the very last one, which was just, I mean, that was typical. That that went back to Monkey Island days. It was just really ridiculous. <laughs> um, but no, it's again an enjoyable game, and I'm actually quite surprised because. It was only released... When was it released? Beginning of this year? Something like that, yeah. It's not very old, man. Yeah, so that was the biggest surprise that it was available. Um, yeah, I'd say... I mean, you guys... Ben, ben and Johnny, you must have it on your download queue, surely. Uh, I haven't I haven't actually got it yet. I've been a bit slow with this week's PlayStation Plus releases, man. Me too. Um, <laughs> like, I, I haven't even hit download on Ninja Gaiden Sigma for the uh, Vita yet. And that's oh, I've got that. my two playlists. So. I've been playing that as well, by the way. It's good. Anyway, carry on. Do you remember yeah. that? Did you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. You might want to get round to it because I'm not sure if that's come off this month or not. Well, the cave. Um, but yeah, uh, the cave. Yeah, yeah it's, it's gone. Been... It's gone on the store. It's gone, is it? Yeah, you guys yeah. missed out. Yeah. I'll play it next time it rolls round, man. Yeah, but it's got that sort of like quirky bit. The cave is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a narrating the whole thing, so it is pretty fun. Oh, that game! I am kicking myself right now. Yeah, I really wanted to play that. Yeah, I mean, for one playthrough, it's great. I what mean, crap I could... name though? I wish it wasn't called that because I just read it and thought, eh. I didn't realize yeah, but... it was it was that game. <laughs> well, the cave is is the whole I... story. Because I got confused. I thought it was cave story or something. 
There's too well, many games. Cave Story is good as well, man. What are you on about? Yeah, I know, but like I've watched Epic Name Bro complete that game, like so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, but the cave looked really fun when I saw the, you know, videos for it and stuff. Damn. What, what oh, was no. they Oh well. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Awesome, man. Um, I haven't really done anything this week. Again? Yeah, I've been working loads. I'll tell you what I have done. I've played a fuck ton of Saints Row 3. An absolute ton of Saints Row 3 with Johnny. Ammo queue. Yep. Been co op in that. I don't know it's what It's a it shame is. that doesn't have four player. It is a I shame. Know. Is it not? I own that game and I've, I've always got it on standby on the PlayStation. Two, two player co op, yeah. It's okay, so let's get on that fun, then man. if these guys are playing. <laughs> this... You have to do it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's such a good laugh. It's, Me and Ben. It's a Go weird on, one, right? Because. I think Saints Row is the only open world game series that I actually like. I, I'm going to rephrase that to Sandbox because I guess Skyrim would count as open world. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Grand Theft Auto. I'm pretty sure the only Grand Theft Auto game I actually liked was Vice City. and like That was the best. Yeah, I mean, Red Dead Redemption was a really good... Like I could see that it was a good game. I just didn't enjoy it. And like Saints Row 2, I fell in love with. And I've already fell in love with Saints Row 3. Like... I don't know what it is about it. I think it's like how over the top, like funny it is most of the time that like just keeps me going and how ridiculous it is. You but... know, sorry, quickly you, about Red Dead. I'm glad I'm not the only one who thought that because I, th- I can see it's a solid title, but I just didn't love it. Yeah, you know, I'm there with you, man. It's like I, w- I was trying to explain it to Johnny earlier. Like I said, you know, I didn't like it, and he was like, "What, really?" And I was like, "Don't, I don't mean, get me I wrong. Just... I didn't hate it." But like, I mean, yeah, I actually agree with you because I didn't complete it in the end. I, only, I got to Mexico and gave up. I did find yep. it a bit samey after a while. So exactly the same. Uh, yeah. uh, it's my favorite Rockstar game. Really? Yeah, it's a fantastic game. I still love it, but I just did. I get. I got a bit bored of it. Well, wow. let like, me say Undead Nightmare. That's my favorite Rockstar game. Never played that one. Undead Nightmare was better. It was better. Wish I played it. Mainly because you get RPG. to see a lot of the characters you met in the normal game, just like in a completely different circumstance kind of thing. Yeah. Like, there's characters that you meet in the normal Red Dead Redemption game that you'll just meet and think, oh, look, it's that guy. And then they'll instantly get nommed by zombies in a really funny way. What? So it's quite cool, man. But yeah, Saints Row 3. Have you guys all played it? Yeah, yeah. Right, and what did what did you think of it? Because when that game first released, I didn't pick it up because I heard people saying, oh, you know, it's gone too far into the crazy territory and stuff. And I was thinking, well, I kind of like the balance in Saints Row 2 between crazy and sort of grounded. Right, well, I turn on zombie mode, I get my giant purple dildo sword out, and I just run around and have fun. <laughs> See, the game's fun, man. That's the key factor man i don't think it's too far into crazy territory at all i don't know where people were getting that from i know you've got the whole like random zombie stuff like in there which john is coming up to that's not really a spoiler you can't really no, spoil this game yeah I think. Mm-hmm. um and i just i didn't think they were going to hand me vehicles that's my only gripe right like i spent a lot of time doing up the uh the remote carjacking tool so that I could jack military vehicles, so that I could get that ju- the uh, VTOL craft. And then, like, three missions later, I got given one anyway. <laughs> so that, that kind of takes away from it when you can't, like, work for stuff like that. In Vice City, like, when you manage to get yourself a tank legitimately and get it into your hideout and stuff, it actually meant something. So that would be my only gripe with it at the moment. Otherwise, really funny game, man. Really enjoying it. Uh, and that is pretty much all I've done this week, to be honest. Boom. 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 So. So, we were talking about Last of Us earlier, right? Yeah. And I know, at least for me, as it stands right now, that is my contender for Game of the Year. Uh, so and I'm I'm throwing my lot in with Ben. I agree. We're, we're at about the midway point now, right? We've still got, obviously, the winter releases to come. And there could be some big games in there that could be contenders. But as it stands right now, who do we think are the contenders for Game of the Year going forwards? Or can we see anyone that is coming out over the winter maybe fighting for that place? So not ones that are out at the moment, no. but at the end of the year? No. Or shall we do so, what I we mean, think? Stuff that's out now. Basically, what, who you think is going to be a contender? Because, I mean, we've got GTA Five coming and stuff. Got like, Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, Beyond Two Souls. There's a lot of games coming that could be contenders. So what do you guys think? 
GTA 5. I think... It's going to sell buckets. What, GTA 5 aside, I think... One, again, you know, it was early on this year. Um, I really enjoyed Nino Kuni, and I think it would be a travesty if it's not in the top five at the end of the year. Uh, I'd be actually, I'd be surprised if it's not in our well, my top five anyway, because I sunk so many hours into it and really enjoyed it. Well, so I I retweeted a tweet from Colin Moriarty from IGN the other day, uh, and he brought up a really good point that like with the success of Nino Kuni, it's almost like it's well, it may be sparking like a JRPG renaissance almost. Like we just there's there's other announcements like Tales of Exilia two got announced to be coming to the West, which could have been done getting announced fucking a couple of weeks ago, so I could have got some extra points on my predictions card. But that happened. Mm-hmm. And obviously Tales of Exilia One's coming. Like it just looks like we're getting a lot more JRPGs and I think that's got everything to do with the fact that Nino Cooney did so well. Yeah, I just think, I don't know, for me, yeah, I'd say for my game of the year then uh, would be at this point, anyway, from what I've played, that's got to be mine because I, yeah, I'm even considering going back to it and I just want to have enough time to dedicate like I did at the beginning of the year. So, yeah, that's what I'm going with so far. Johnny, you, uh, you're you thinking Last of Us at the moment, right? Yes, um, but I obviously GTA 5 is going to sell more than Last of Us. So the Last of Us sold 3.4 million. 3.4 million, yeah. million, yeah, in its first three in three weeks. weeks. So yeah, that's obviously incredibly well. How much did GTA 4 sell in its first week? Something like 12 million. Yeah, does, so it really doesn't have... Does that I mean, make it game of the year, though? Yeah, I mean, that doesn't make it game of the year, you're right, but I think what they've shown so far, everyone seems pretty positive about it, and just simply the fact that it will reach more people on the Xbox 360 and PS3. I think a lot more people will have their say because not enough people have played The Last of Us, I think, for it to be a game of the year, I think. How often do you see a console exclusive as a game of the year as well? I'm not sure. Yeah, I... It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be something that, you know... No, it shouldn't, but, but like, obviously... In the same way that you say game sales don't make the difference, but, you know... Yeah, I mean, yeah. four million is a failure to like you know EA. So, but yeah, I mean, Tomb Raider sold that in I believe the first four weeks, right? So it did sell better than Tomb Raider, but they were like, oh, Tomb Raider didn't meet sales expectations, whereas Sony have been like, no, Last of Us did fucking amazingly well, like compared to what we thought yeah. it did. So this yeah. is good. You're but at yeah, the end of the console cycle. You've got a new IP. And it's mm. like a it's a zombie survival horror game. And when do they do that well now? Mm. It's true. All right. Well, Jamie, is there anything that you want to give a shout out to coming going forwards? I am a little bit excited for GTA now. I think I've kind of forgotten about it in the past, but that trailer today kind of brings it back on the map, puts it back on there. Um, yeah. I mean. We've got Watch Dogs at the end of the year as well. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. There's going to be the whole like first wave of next-gen titles coming out at the end yeah. of the year as well. And they'll count. They'll have a month worth of play. So, uh, yeah. So, Watch Dogs. Um, I mean, if we... I don't. Destiny still has a December window, but we're not going to get it in December, are we? Let's be honest. Uh, there was a trailer released recently that said, look for more info in 2014. So, I don't yeah, think we'll just, see it this yeah. year. I mean, I don't see Killzone doing anything. Um... Of the games that are released currently, though, I've kind of just got like a favourite, maybe four or five sitting around. What are they? Um, I mean, obviously, The Last of Us, that's up there. Yep. Um, but I'm kind of torn because I still think Tomb Raider might be better in some ways. Wow, really? really? Yeah, Tomb Raider might be up there. Um, I'm with Gianni on Nino Cooney. I think that's a high one this year. I think Bioshock's taken a bit of a backseat. People seem to be forgetting about that one now. It's true. Uh, That's true. Look, that is true. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dispute the fact that Bioshock had an amazing story. I just feel Last of Us was better. Yeah. Like. I mean, that's probably yeah. Um, um. But yeah. Otherwise, I don't want to be forgetting about Lego City Undercover. That's. Uh, <laughs> Lego City Undercover. Yeah, you've been really rating that highly, man. Is it? Is it that good? Oh, you're being serious? No, he is. Dead I dead am dead. actually being serious. So. Um, oh. I, we'll talk about the Wii U later. It's something we're going to talk about later on. But okay. to be honest, though, just looking at LEGO City, for the console launching in December, we're, like, we got that one in March. That is a reason to buy the console. 
it okay. was the first reason to buy the console. Well, and... Just hands down. All right, so you're calling GTA 5 then, Jay, yeah? I think it'll be up there, yeah. John is also calling GTA 5. Yeah, simply because it's on a wider platform. Jan is holding true with Nino Cooney. Fair play. Much yeah. respect. And I, st- I don't think anything's going to beat Last of Us this year, honestly. Um, I'll be. I hope something does. There you go. I would love for something to be better than it this year, but I just can't see it happening. Uh, but talking of GTA Five, uh, there was a new gameplay gameplay trailer released today. Funny that. Look, talking about it. Oh, I know. But yeah. So we've all watched it. Yep, we all watched it. One second. Initial reaction. One second. Jenny, are you still there? I don't think he's there. He's fucked off and left no, his no, again. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Right. I thought I had time. <laughs> <laughs> You just dipping out. We're talking GTA 5, Janny. You yes. only just watched the trailer. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Go on, and it's fresh for you. Go on, Gianni. Talk us. Go on, Janny. It's like it's like they've. I don't know. It. I, speechless. It's, I'm speechless. I, I'm absolutely. I don't know where to begin. Like uh, we all knew about the three protagonists. That that was made clear ages ago. Um, but it's it's all the little things. It's almost it's it's just like watching San Andreas again, all grown up. And and hopefully a bit better. Um, like they got the whole stamina. There's like a stamina thing. Did I re- read that properly? Uh, uh, there's, I definitely saw a stamina bar in the uh, the mountain biking stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it, it just seems. What I'm most surprised at is that how vast it looks, and it's all going to fit on one disc. If you're well, I suppose unless you're an Xbox owner, in which case you probably end up with four. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's it just looks like they've actually take like explored as much as they can and really, really gone to town with this one because four was such a disappointment. Yeah, I think they I had agree. to do something, and with Saints Row three doing so well and even Sleeping Dogs to to a lesser extent, um, those were, came on so strong, so they had to come up with something. Um, and I think the one thing that came up came up with me in the trailer, which I was most impressed, which sort of t- not to my breath away but was uh the fact that you can switch between them in the in the missions uh, between each protagonist oh yeah that was just uh, oh and the fact that amazing. when you switch out like that character isn't just sat there he goes off about and like gets that on was one of my favorite things like you switch to like what's the other guy you know the rich guy like on his bike like talking to his son ah oh, so and then you go to the other guy trevor and he's like in the middle of like a police chase ah oh. Apparently, there's like quite a few of those like random things that can happen when you're switching between characters. Did there's you... like a few. Wait, did sorry. Did you I'm randomly not... like go to a third world country? <laughs> Are you Why? doing diving? <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a Janny. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really bad? Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of bad. <laughs> can you re-invite me? Where to cut this? Obviously. Yeah, sure. I'll do it now. There you go. That's yeah, better. Right. And you sound good again. Sorry, I just turned off Steam. Maybe Steam was sucking up. Me. It was sucking you off. <laughs> Suck, sucking anyway, you off. Johnny, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as, as you were saying, don't lose focus. Go, go, go. Uh, yeah, I was talking about the um, like when you're switching characters, like the random events that you get sucked into. Like, oh. um, you know, you switch to Trevor and he's like, in the middle of a police chase. Uh, apparently, Rockstar was saying that they've made like a, quite a lot of different scenarios. So um, hopefully, you won't be seeing like the same, you know, the same thing happening all the time when you're switching between the various characters it's pretty cool and i don't know if you saw in the bottom right screen there was like three character portraits and there was a fourth one below that's your that's your online avatar Ah. it's your dog so So your online character (laughs) yeah and she she isn't the main character of the storyline no i guess you just switch trim like you do the other characters does that mean you're gonna hate it jenny what does that mean you're gonna hate it because you could make an online avatar and use it in single player but he isn't the main character no, because I think that Chronicles re- reference. By it the way, is. do you remember you hated that, Jenny? Because yeah, you... I, I know you're getting that. <laughs> but no, the, the the I think the characterization of the three is quite clearly defined. Um, so it's not going to be. It, it's sort of like you are following them. They're the stars of the show. Um, whereas White Knight, there, there's no comparison between the two. You can't even make that comparison. Get out. I can do Get whatever out. I want. Fuck you. So at the end of the trailer, they did say that they're going to explain more about the GTA Online 
thingamabobby component. Which, adjunct. The, the only thing that I really want to hear from them is how many people can you play online with? Because it looked well, impressive. To me, it looked, I think, was it eight? Did you? Did, did it, um, anyone count? Was it eight? There were more than eight there. there were was more it more than, than eight? eight? Yeah. Maybe 16, I'd say. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many and what sort of game modes are going to be available. It'd be quite cool if you can, you know, make money, buy parts of the city and maybe have, have your friends sort of exist in the same, you know, buying... Maybe like gang warfare or something. So like Saints Row 3? Like Saints Row 3, yes. Like The Godfather as well. I think they did something similar. Yeah, like, it would be interesting yeah. to see what they do. Well, I liked... The one bit I did like was the... Uh, they got Cabela's uh, Hunter game in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I, I guess it's going to work as the same as the Red, Red, the Red Dead Redemption. Just to expand it a bit more. Because yep. there was hunting in there, wasn't there? No. This, I mean, the game itself looks like... Without ever being detrimental it looks like it's about five or six games in one yeah yeah and it, and it doesn't feel like it's going to be a burden at all it feels like it's going to flow and they're going to connect so well I mean, the bit when they were cycling i thought that was a different game it looks so smooth looks so nice yeah and the I mean, tennis and golf the tennis yeah look, the tennis looks yeah. like a tennis game like mm, it looked look to me tennis. like they were playing a tennis game even the golf looked a bit like tiger woods man yeah really impressive stuff i can't and, believe they crammed it all in and talking about that, I bet you can recreate um, the, the moment where Tiger got <laughs> got caught by his missus. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to want to do that now. That's going to be the reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I just thought it was South Park. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, if we... If I take one thing that impressed you the most, then from Jay, don't put me on the spot. That that bit with the three of them. So you had the guy in the helicopter, the guy with the sniper rifle, and the guy uh, abseiling down and taking him out. What the fuck? Yeah. You could switch between all three of them and play at any point. You didn't have to wait for a set piece. You could just keep switching between them. And yeah. oh, oh, yes, more of that, please. Yeah. Sweet, Johnny, yours. Uh, mine was actually the city, like how expansive it is and, and how alive it looks. I mean, if uh, if you go back and watch it, like how many simple, like how many cars are on screen at once, how many pedestrians, like how big the the MC looks. Like when they're swapping, it's all like pans around the city, looks very detailed. So I'm really excited for that. That, that, that was my favourite thing, seeing awesome. more to see. Jenny, what was yours? Well, I was going to say what Jay said, but I'm just looking at this picture with the airplane going over the water with rocks on either side and the sun. And yeah. bloody hell, that <coughs> sorry, I'm losing my voice. Uh, that just <laughs> looks so impressive. Um, I just hope. I mean, my biggest concern is always with a game like that is how glitchy is it going to be. But if it's not made by Ubisoft, I suppose it's not too much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yours, yours is the visuals then. The, the visuals and yeah, I mean, just basically what. You, what what everyone else has said, you know, the much the amount that's going on, and yeah, and being able to switch between the characters and you know, uh, to your own advantage. So, so Chinese is everything. I'm that's greedy. Everything. The entire <laughs> everything. <laughs> My favorite you, bit by a long shot in that trailer was the planning of the heists, like yeah. the way they were like, like you can plan out how you want this to go, and the way they had like, oh look, we're gonna set like a dump truck in front to like stop it and then get like a truck to come in and ram it off the road and stuff. If that's really in depth, then you can go through a load of different plans and stuff to like execute your heists and stuff. That could be the most impressive part to me. I, think. I assume there'll be two different. Uh, well, the way I thought that it'll be is like, there's two routes you can take either like the loud guns blazing or the stealthier, like a different approach. That's what I took about it. There's two different ways, but maybe there is more. I don't know. Well, imagine well, the, the stealth would most probably end up, well, for me anyway, it will start off being stealth and then it will just be all guns blazing because I've cocked up. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, well, that's that's that then, I guess. Check that out the trailer. That. It was released earlier today or it was released on Tuesday, <laughs> I should probably say. Yeah, five <laughs> days ago. <laughs> um, GameStop have stopped taking pre-orders on the PlayStation 4 because they've reached that allocation for launch. Holy poops. Holy poops. It must have be, it must be selling well, man. Have we all pre-ordered our PS4? I actually haven't. <laughs> oh, Ben, you're going to yeah, lose out. I know, I know. I haven't pre-ordered mine yet. But where? Where, where should we do it? I, I'm, I can't decide. See, Janny hasn't well, pre-ordered his either. 
I've yeah. got mine ready on a little website called shop2.net, just in case. But I'm I still may buy it somewhere else if I can find find it cheaper. But it will be from Shop Two if I can't. Shop Two, no. that's probably a good shout because they tend to be quite on the button. Yeah, I've I've used them. Cheaper. Yeah, I got my uh, my Nina Kuni limited edition from them and came perfectly. You know, and and that was with the shortages. You know, I pre-ordered it like a week before all those shortages were happening, and I still got mine. So yeah, they've not done me wrong yet. So that's why I pre-ordered the Instinct with them just to secure myself one. And normally, no, if you... one. Jay, where did yeah. you choose for your pre-order? I've gone into game. <laughs> so yours, yeah. Yours is pre-ordered through game. Are they doing any sort of incentives or anything like that? Uh, they they're doing. They have announced since the uh, since E3 they're going to do that Killzone and Drive Club bundle. I don't need that. Um, yeah. I just I need the hardware and I need to know that I can pre-order a couple of games. And the reason I've done it there is just that I want to be able to go down there for midnight launch. I want to be able to get you know grab it there and then. Yeah. Get it out of the way. Well, it's it's kind of cool that you have done that because we can tag along to the midnight launch with you and get that midnight launch experience without having to deal with the bullshit of shopping a game. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's honestly it because I wanted the midnight launch. That's the only way I could see it being possible. And then we can all go around Jay's and play it. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. Nope. Not, <laughs> not at that time. <laughs> um. I was looking at pre-ordering mine through Asda, Asda Living, I think it is, their website. I think their deal is uh, if you pre-order it through them, they give you a £20 voucher, uh, which I was thinking I could just use against one of the games that I get at launch. So it would mean I get a game for like 20 30 quid as well. So that's pretty good. And I think Amazon are doing something similar. I'm not 100% sure. But I don't are know. They? It's going to have to happen soon because I think... If GameStop are sold out over there and the PlayStation brand is more popular in Europe than it is over there, it's only a matter of time before we sell out as well. So, Yeah, so I'd suggest you, you, know, you guys pre-order it soon. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Pro tip to everyone else then, go pre-order your PS4, otherwise you're not going to see it. I guess I guess Amazon isn't doing a incentive. That's my bad, but whatever. That's done. Um Love Film in the UK are stopping their games rental service, which was one of the only things that set them apart from Netflix. Uh, what do you guys make of that? They said sorry, so it makes it all right. <laughs> that fixes like a BP oil spill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I, I know people that once this was announced, I ran to them and said, look, look at this. And they've just gone, well, that's me done. I can't afford to game now then. Really? Yeah, so I know people who rely solely on Love Film to do yeah, this, uh, to get a video gaming in, but they just I'd have like to get to a see... PS4. And... Yeah, I would like to see the numbers and see how popular it was. Like, why are they not doing it? Maybe not enough people would... Well, I'd imagine it's probably the costs involved. I'm... Think of how many people steal the games from there and how many people damage them and they have to replace them and stuff. If it's If it's a really popular service and they're constantly having to replace discs... That's going to cost them quite so, a lot, man. You know oh. rented DVDs cost more than normal DVDs. Do rented games, yep. I yep. guess, co- it's the would same, cost yeah. more? Because yeah. you're buying it with the intention of renting it out, so they have to charge more to make up for the losses that they would have made. Yeah. <laughs> shame. <laughs> <Rad debate. laughs> it is a shame. Yeah. I don't know what it says about... Like, Love Film is owned by Amazon as well. So, yes. Yes. like, if any company was still going to be able to, like have a valid rental service it would be amazon but amazon do have that indie store now for games right or is that only in america yeah. Yeah, they release that indie store i don't know whether it's actually amazon. live yet i know it's coming okay yeah mm. it's on the way well but... they're getting a bit fancy with the spices aren't they amazon have now got this service where they can look at all your records and every music cd you've ever bought is now available just to listen to like to stream it through the amazon what? website now as well really yeah, they've got some sort of streaming service on there now. That That's actually like... really cool. Yeah. That is very cool. So they'll just check through your pre your your history and they'll yeah. Amazon kept like keep telling me to trade in my old books that I've bought from there. It's like oh that old book you've got, come trade it in. Oh, yeah, we we'll give you twenty p. Yeah. Yeah. Books. Well, we're like, talking like actual paper books or like Kindle books. I've got a couple of no oh, physical real physical books. Books. They do physical book trade-ins. That's surreal. Yeah, no, not even that. They they email you telling you to do it. Like, 
game. Like, remember that game you bought? Trade it in. <laughs> exactly. Game do that as well. I I imagine game would do that. That does sound like something game would do. But um, so, how do you think this affects the industry as a whole in the UK? I mean, like Jamie said, he knows people that relied on Love Film Rentals to actually play their games. Do you think there's a lot of people like that? I mean, I personally don't know anyone that relies on me Love Film. either. So it, maybe that's why they had to stop it. Maybe not enough people were doing. I don't think it will affect the game industry that much. I think people would just have to be a bit more careful. Maybe buy more pre-owned stuff. But what well, sets them apart from Netflix now? It's essentially the same service, isn't it now? Yeah. I was going well, to actually, say, I, I mean... don't know. Netflix. Does Netflix have a service where you can get DVDs and Blu-rays sent to you? I don't think they do. I think Netflix no. is purely streaming. Yeah, so, yeah, as long as Love Film is still doing that, where you can get DVDs and Blu-ray sent to you, then that makes them different. But, but to be honest, I, I don't know. Maybe it's been a while since I last. I mean, I've used Netflix because I like the whole idea of streaming it. I, I find it a bit strange. I don't know why. When you just said that, I found it a bit weird that people still you like you would, you you know request a DVD if you could just stream it online, on a subscription. Uh, maybe it's just me well i mean i used love film for all of two days right i got the free trial used it for two days and then i cancelled it but that was a good three or four years ago um, yeah and i've been using netflix for a few months and netflix just seems like it works better even though it is i believe a pound more expensive a month on your membership yeah like i just i feel like it works better but like love film netflix had the same problem of like there is some really cool stuff on there but there's a lot of tat, like just a lot of shit that you'll never watch. So, I don't know, man. I don't know how valid those services are, man, compared to like something where, say, Amazon, if hypothetically they did do something where like all of their films that they have for sale, you could also stream and like just pay a little bit to stream it. I think that service would work a lot better. I don't know. We'll see. It's, we'll see if. Uh, it's just my crap because... for ideas again. I mean, Love Film's based on a monthly thing, isn't it? It's rolling subscription, so we'll see if it drops off. So yeah, that's but... happening in the first couple of weeks of August. If you're an existing member, they'll tell you no more. And then when you get a new account set up now, they're warning you it's not going to happen. I guess time will tell then. Let's see. Yeah. Um, Dark Souls 2, a subject I love talking about. Um, I haven't heard about this, so tell me, please. So the game director has gone on record saying that um, if a player is skilled enough, they could essentially start the game halfway through. Say so what? Basically, jump straight in. There's going to be no set things. You know, like in Dark Souls 1, there was a set order to things, right? You had to go and ring the bells of awakening. You well, had to go get the Lord. I don't know if you ever watch speedruns and stuff. I mean, you can cut off just like sections of the game still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but there's there was still like a set order that you had to do things in, right? Yeah. So you, you had to ring those bells, you had to get the Lord Vessel and stuff. They're basically removing all of that sort of stuff, so you could just go straight to where you need to go, rather than go and explore the world. Yeah, that's interesting for um, speedrunners, but that's not something that I'd be doing. I'd be probably playing the game slow as well, fucking snails. All, all it says to me is, imagine starting a fresh game in Dark Souls, right? Yeah. Um, and then going straight into the catacombs. That's like the first place that you go. Yeah. Right? That would be hard as balls, right? With just a yep. character. I'm just imagining it's going to be like that. So, like, there's yeah. no restrictions. You could go straight off into an area with super strong enemies. Because they have said that um, Dark Souls 2 is way more open ended. It's like much more of an open world, right? Than yeah. the first one. They've it's, said. So. I don't have a problem with it at all. I, I actually think that's really cool. And it's going to allow, allow way more possibilities for, like, the really skilled players to, like, yeah. really just go to town. Like, can you finish this segment of the game with a, like, fresh character and stuff like that? Like, you'll be seeing a lot of skilled players uploading their stuff to YouTube about that. So I'm quite excited to see what everyone does. Yeah. Quite excited to I, try it as well. You're right, though. It is one of these things where you complete a game and then where's the challenge? Like, you've had New Game Plus. That's been something in recent years that's done well. But... But yeah, maybe something like this as well. You know, I think I don't think anybody's going to go in and do that first time, are they? Uh, are they? I, I don't might. know. Well, it, uh, it completely don't. depends, right? Because no one's going to know exactly where to go for the first few days, right? And uh, I think it's going to make it more interesting because 
how many people in Dark Souls 1 did try and go through the catacombs first rather than going through the undead berg? Like, you could the see... First the first week before. of Dark Souls was the funnest, man. Just, like, going into the... the um, where was it? The, yeah, what you just said. And, like, just getting absolutely owned. I was like, well, where am I going? I didn't even, I didn't even know like, you, that you could turn around and go the opposite way. And I think, I think yeah, the way they're saying it is, like, that's going to be way more prevalent in this game. Like that exploration like you could end up anywhere because there's going to be no restrictions on where you can go that seems really cool to me so that's my two cents on that what do you guys make of it i'm gonna suck at it still but i'm gonna <laughs> love it that's, gonna, that's, yeah. that's, that's my relationship with these games i i want to be better at them and i've said this before i would love to be really good at these games because they're fantastic i just suck so hard the only- and i get the I only get way so to get back scared. Those games is to die repeatedly. You have to actually learn the monsters that you're fighting, and you know the best time to attack and stuff. Ah, oh, it's good. Yep. Yep. Almost every yep. new, almost every new creature in Demon Souls and Dark Souls killed me at least once. I think in my first playthroughs of each game, like just because I didn't know what they were gonna do, like I would yeah. just get killed by them. Even and sometimes, the little, even the little like useless dregling things in Dark Souls in Demon Souls. Like, I didn't know it was going to go mad and spaz out with its sword, so that killed me once. Did like, you get um, eaten by a mimic? <laughs> I did. A mimic, yep. I, got I didn't realise that. I opened it, I just got fucking numbed and died. <laughs> uh, no, I okay. got quite far in Demon Souls. I struggled a bit more in Dark Souls. Really? I, fact, I, I always found that Demon Souls was harder than Dark Souls. Well, uh, yeah, but with Demon Souls, you could just farm grass and have like. That's true. In the grass. The Estus was a good shot, a good shot. I, yeah, really enjoyed it. That continues. I wonder what they're doing with the magic. I don't know if you've seen about the magic. If they're changing it at all, or if it's still gonna be like you get a certain amount of casts. Yeah, because I know they've made it easier with the bonfires. Now you can warp. Uh, warp. I think straight away you can warp. Yeah. Bonfires, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. That is that is cool because that was a really useful feature that you didn't get access to until about halfway through the game last time. So yeah, I didn't even think they would give it you until it happens. Oh, they are going to allow me to do this, you know. Yeah, cool. I'm 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 fine with it. I I think it's shaping up to be a good game. I was worried that they changed director, but it looks like it's... the rest of the team is keeping the spirit alive. So yeah, and that's next year, next March, isn't it? It's not this year. Yes, yes. March. I kind of hoping they release it on PS4 and Xbox One. I don't know. It, it's anyway. not too late for them to announce it. I'll tell yeah. you what. It won't be on though. It won't be on the Wii U. Burp. No, Burp. It won't. See that segue. Uh, Speaking of segways. I love segways. Too Speaking many segways. Speaking of Wii U, Jamie, you've got some. Uh, you got some Wii U talks that you want to have, don't you? Right. Uh, it's actually because of Gianni. He sent me this article last night on Twitter, and uh, it was it was basically saying, "Don't give up on the Wii U yet. Let's you know. Let's look at how Nintendo's consoles." have have panned out and i just wanted to get you guys and get some input here because it kind of makes sense if you look at the ds it had a rocky start the success came later on the wii had the same the 3ds definitely had that and now the 3ds i mean cut all your ps2 arguments out i would still say snes but to be honest 3ds is the one that's argued as being the greatest console of all time now by who by everyone, everyone. Really? Yeah. <laughs> By people who bought Animal Crossing. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the 3DS, the greatest console of all time. What? <laughs> Who's yeah. saying this? Well, Who's the DS. You these things. The DS had quite a strong lineup at the end. If you think about the games that came out and and that were available sort of midway to the end of its life. So. Um, I won't really agree with the 3DS, so I'm going to put my neck out and say that. <laughs> but a DS, though... I cut out. No, you're fine. No. Um, yeah, the, I'd say the DS had a really strong lineup, And the fact that I had I had a, loads of games on it, I didn't even realise. And I wasn't even a massive player of it. <laughs> the problem with the Wii U, yeah, is that it basically is the sequel to the GameCube, The Quickening. <laughs> GameCube 2, the quickening. Well, hang it on. Really it's the, more like the, Wii was. the sequel to the DS, man. No. I, I don't... How do you mean? I, I don't get either of that. So, I'm just... But third, so, the, the GameCube suffered a lot because no one would develop for it. Like, there's no third-party support, is there, currently, for the Wii U. 
But didn't they say like, the same with the Wii originally as well? And no one was developing for it. Well, no, but they had like loads of like party crap that they could sell. And I mean, I think the M software, the M software sales for the Wii weren't that impressive. I think it was just mo- mostly like Wii Sports and you know casual games because they still had problems selling third party titles for the Wii. Yeah, they did. But but you know because it was such a cheap console and um, you know it had like Wii Sports and sports it, that could you know get a different generation of gamers in. They can you know get your mum involved. Like Wii Fit and everything, whereas the Wii U, it's way more expensive. It has this like complicated online system that maybe parents don't want, know, you know, know much about their kids going on. It's not as friendly, is it? You know, you see that really big iPad-looking controller. It's right, not we, easy. That's, see, right, that, but... that's why I say it's almost like a sequel to the DS, right? Because you've got the screen on the TV, the screen in your controller, and like they they're designed to work in tandem with each other. Just like the DS's screen and touchscreen are as well. It's just yes. like a home console version of the DS. That's don't, forget. Think, don't forget. I think the Wii U is just abstruse. But they've abstruse done that. Is what? <laughs> With the two screens, I think that's really that's quite unfair because both the PS4 and the Xbox One are both going to use either. Well, the, the, the PS4 is going to use the, the Vita, so that's basically the same. And Microsoft is using uh, Smart Glass, so you could use your tablet. So they're all. Nintendo had to do that in order to keep the, in line with the other consoles. Nintendo and, uh, had a year uh, head start, man. Well, yeah, but don't forget. Uh, the, the, is it really a year head start, though, or is it just doing something else completely? Yeah, I think it's, so. uh, it's... Yeah, maybe. The other thing is, are you seriously sitting there and saying you're not interested in the Wii U with... All right, I'll even throw it in. Wind Waker HD, New Mario Kart, New Zelda, New Mario... Uh, Metroid is bad, must be coming out on it at some point. It's definitely uh, a slow burner. I think people will get more interested the more titles are out for it. At the moment, there's, you know, there's not much for you know, hardcore gamers really. Or even Smash Brothers, I even forgot. But don't forget that was the same with the Wii, and that was the same with the GameCube. With the Wii, yeah, get rid of all the shovelware. The GameCube never picked up though. That was a yep. pretty much a failure. Yeah, but for for uh, core gamers, it had some fantastic games, and the Wii U. Oh on, yeah, but we're not talking about core gamers. We need to like talk about you know success. That's everyone else. But, but yeah, um, but the point of the article though um, was to look at how the first year was always bumpy. Um, so I dug in and I found a couple of titles from the Wii that kind of make the point quite clear. So the Wii launched in November two thousand and six. Yep. And then the first big game. Would anybody remember what their first big game was for the Wii? Uh, Wii Sports. Sports. Not Wii Sports. Screw that. What was that? That was uh, Johnny being attacked. It wasn't me. That was Johnny being attacked. It was Johnny being attacked. That was me from Syria again. My bad. Spelt <laughs> <laughs> Sanders going to get you. But no, seriously. Uh, anyway, Mario, because... Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 1 came out a year later, November 2007. Mm. Yeah. We didn't get Smash Bros. until March 2008. I remember yes. that. Yeah, I remember. And then, as a swan song, you've got Skyward Sword in November 11, right? Yeah. yeah, and similar things are happening with the 3DS. The games are only really starting to come out this year. Yeah, I guess yeah, you've had, you've got. I mean, because that that Nintendo promotion where you buy three and you get the fourth one for free, then they're all like fantastic big names in there. Yep. And we never had those before. Like you've been playing that Fire Emblem one, Ben, loving that. Fucking finished it, man. Loved it. Right. Obviously, I haven't put down Animal Crossing. Right. Been playing uh, Monster Hunter as well on my 3DS. Yeah, that's in that thing, isn't it? Yeah, Monster Hunter was in the promotion. So, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I think we're not going to get to the full year before Nintendo starts bringing out some good games for the Wii U. I see the Famitsu thingy score for uh, Pikmin 3 has just come through now as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, what did it get? What do, What do you reckon it would have got? Uh, well, what's a perfect score in Famitsu? Forty out of forty, right? Forty, yeah. Yep. Uh, I would say probably what thirty-two to thirty-six. So it got thirty-seven out of forty. Oh, okay, better than I thought. Then it got three nines and a perfect ten. So I love that. I've pre-ordered oh, yeah. my copy. I'm looking forward to it. You know, that's out in a couple of weeks, and then really it is just seeing what they do at Christmas with bringing Zelda. See if that gets some numbers in. But hey, my problem that I have with it right now, right, is. There's not enough stuff there that will keep me there, if that makes sense. On the Wii U, you mean, yeah? Yeah, on the Wii U. Um, that game, the new game by the guys that made um, Xenoblade, that looks pretty fun. I'd want to play that, probably. Yeah. Uh, Smash Bros, like, I think I'm done with Smash Bros. 
That's how no. I say it. No, I don't no, think you are. Smash no. Bros. is a part of it, right? But I would never play that by myself. Mate, it's you were... It's the kind of game where I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and sit down and play some a few hours of Smash Bros. with myself. Like... I really want to. Know, I really want to remember what you were talking about when Mega Man was announced, because I'm almost certain you said that you were getting it. You really wanted it. I was excited when I saw that Mega Man controlled like Mega Man. He, jumped, <laughs> he had the same jump jump hack as Mega Man. You could spam the Mega Buster just like in Mega Man. That was cool. That was a nice touch. Look, the, admit, the one thing but, I'll end up getting. A, I'll be honest. I'll probably will end up with a Wii U on a on a when it comes down in price. It's always the same. I did it with the GameCube. Did it with a Wii. Um, well, my brother did anyway, and I'll probably end up with a Wii U when the, the catalogue of games is out. So I, I, you know, I I haven't slated it as much as as some people have because I know I will end up with one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, same for me. I think I'll probably be picking up one when they show um, DMHD Zelda. You'll see all of my all of my one. I, I want a proper Zelda. I'm not even talking about Wind Waker. Get out. Of here. Well, I mean, as much as I would love to play Wind Waker again in HD, like, there's always the fact, it's like, I've played it before, like, I, I know yeah. that game, so I'm not that excited for it. If they Me show too. a new Zelda that looks amazing, I might be down, honestly. But I think they will. I think there's, there's they too will. Much, there's too much, like, bad talk coming from everywhere else, basically, about that thing. Like, EA said that most of their titles aren't going to be on it going forwards and stuff. Like, that's that- that's damaging, man. Is that a loss? Yeah, that is a loss, man. That's a lot of games that aren't going to be available on that platform. Like, but what heavy right. hitters? Yeah, sorry, go on. For me, like my little my little Jerry Springer moment in the corner here. My little final thought on this for me. I I'm you know I don't own a company that makes a games console, so I'm never going to get all of the games I want in one place. Um, I would love for the world to work that way. I'd love to know that one console delivered all the games that I want. But where it doesn't. I can see where these companies have different thought processes and I can see the way Nintendo want to do things. I can see the way Sony want to do things. And I really couldn't give a shit about what Microsoft want to do. Sports. But, yeah, sports. <laughs> but so, like I said, it would be nice if it was all in one place. But now I know if I want story and I want action and, and, and violence even uh, and, and the visuals, I know I'm going to be playing a PlayStation game. But if I want, you know wholesome fun something i can sit down and play with the family um just old characters that i love yeah it's it's probably going to be a game that's on the wii u and i don't mind i don't mind i you know i could afford to get the two so i'll do it like i said though it's just a bit of a shame i couldn't have all the games i love in one place to save the hassle but that's the way the world works i suppose yeah Yeah. another thing another thing that i wanted to say as well was uh ubisoft were talking about uh zombie u um, and they said that like they didn't even come close to breaking even on that game. So no. they, really, yeah, they said they have no intention of even thinking about doing a sequel or anything like that to it because but, it apparently performed terribly. And that was one of the, I believe, one of the most attached games at launch. But is it because they couldn't copy the Assassin's Creed engine and just fished out another another title again? I don't know. I. Th- I th- I think it's got more to, more to do with the fact that like nobody bought a Wii U, man. How many how many are on the market at the moment? Do we know? Well, well, only then... that more copies of The Last of Us have been sold than consoles of Wii U. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they're about the same actually. I think the Wii U is on about three and a half million now. Hmm. So but don't forget, up... Zombie U was hard locked to the bundle when it was released. That's true. That contributes to sales. Yeah, I guess so. I mean. I'm, no, I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm saying you're saying they didn't come close to breaking even, but the only reason they bloody sold any copies was because it was hard locked. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Fuck you, Ubisoft. <laughs> um, I don't know. I again, I think I probably will end up getting one. Right, eventually, it's going to have a big enough library where I can justify, like, if I buy this now, I've got all of these great games that I haven't played on it that I will play now. Um. But uh, right now, as it stands, I don't think we're at that point yet, and it hasn't made me want to buy it. Man. Do you but... think Nintendo could benefit from like a Nintendo Plus system, seeing as both Sony and Microsoft have one now? Like maybe if they give it like a free SNES game every month or something. Oh, if they did that on their back catalogue, that that could yeah. be the difference for me. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't but like... want to be charging five pound fifty for a SNES game. That's the problem for starters. Yeah. The biggest problem is like the SNES is old, man, and SNES SNES emulation has been around for probably 
like what 15 years yeah like, it's very easy you want to play a snes game like they're all you can do it on your phone tips on your pc or on your phone yeah you can get them tablet, anywhere. Yeah. and they don't cost all right we'll five pounds start chucking some n64 games at us then mm. yeah no, but to be honest i wouldn't begrudge if they had a snes game n64 and a game or in a gamecube game uh, on a monthly basis or something like that you know like we get four on a on a ps plus if they did yeah. something similar going with the generations, that they could easily do that. Throw in a NES game. That's, there you go. You've got four great classics straight off. Yeah, they got a huge back cap, which they could take advantage of. Yeah, especially SNES. Um, and again, just because I'm... Obviously, yeah, I wouldn't pay £5 for a SNES game, but if it was free for, uh, for a subscription I had with something else, it's an install because it means I don't have to boot up a glitchy emulator or... You know, I don't have to get loads of things from different uh, different parties and put them all together. It's all there. It works with a controller. Um, so I wouldn't begrudge that at all. And yeah, I think Nintendo might have to wake up as well um, because they could also take advantage of the fact that Microsoft is so half-assed with their one. Um, if they just match Sony, if they got anywhere near to Sony, they I think they could win some more people in. Yeah, I. I can see it working, to be honest, but I mean, is that something that Nintendo would do? Because probably not. I mean, <laughs> you need to remember that Nintendo still sees itself more as like a toy company than like a, a video game company, if that makes sense. Like a lot of their practices, they try and not be too any cons- any consumer about things, and like having subscription models and stuff like that isn't something that I'd imagine they'd want to do. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they that's just my opinion of Nintendo. But, but they, didn't, they didn't want to have to do discs, and they, they in the end, they, they, they had to follow suit. Uh, they didn't want really online gaming, and they, they've had to follow suit with that. So I think there's going to come to a point, or they're going to have to come to a point and realise that they've got to stop playing catch-up with the basics and just pander to people's needs. Because I still think, when you hear of a new Mario game, you still get excited. Mario Kart, Zelda, you know, all those franchises... You, the core gamers still get excited for that, and as much as everyone bitched and moaned about the Wii, we all played them those games. The yeah. Wii was a laughing stock, but we all had them. So, who's laughing? Us well, or Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, Nintendo, they've got nothing to worry about, right? Like, we we all know that Nintendo are fucking rich, man. As a company, this could fail. Their next, like, I don't know how many consoles could fail. They could fail for what was it? They could like not make any money for like the next seventy years and still be fine. But when people say they failed, I mean, just because they don't hit their sales target doesn't necessarily mean they're not making a profit on the consoles. I, that's a real sweeping statement because I well, really don't we, know. The Wii U was the first console that they didn't make a profit on. Every console a... they've ever sold before the Wii U, they sold at a profit from from the get go. The Wii yeah. U is the first console they started selling at a loss. I don't know whether they're selling it at a profit now. But it, it needed the um, it needed the two game attached, didn't it, at launch? Yeah, and people weren't doing that. But then there wasn't really anything to bloody buy, so <laughs> what you can't blame now? them. I mean, you say um, Lego City Undercover is really good, right? But what other really strong Wii U games are there right now that could justify us going out and buying it? Um, I mean, that's the console seller. I don't think anything else is a console seller. But then there are other games that might be better than other versions. So the Sonic and Sega Racing, if you've never played it and you owned a Wii U and a PlayStation or an Xbox, you'd benefit from getting the Wii U version. So there are things like that. But yeah, Lego City Undercover, for me, is the only console seller out there right now. And don't forget, Bayonetta 2, I reckon, is probably going to be the one that kickstart the Wii U because that will, that will will that's quite anticipated and quite a surprise. And... All they need to do is announce another big game about two, three months after that to be released. And I think they could be on a roll. So, yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with that article I sent you, Jay. I, I don't think it's right to white off the Wii U at the moment because I think it's, you know, going forward, it could be quite strong towards the end. Maybe not killing the, the PS4 or the Xbox One, but in its no. own little... Well, that's the problem. Everybody's hmm. throwing all three of them in the same basket and they're not... Hmm. I, I think... This has to be considered a completely different thing now. Like the Wii was, in comparison yeah, to the other two. It was nothing like the other two, was it? No. Well, I mean, it's, it's easy enough to, def- to defend it and stuff, but the way I see it is kind of in the same boat as the Vita, but the Vita kind of really deserves to be more popular than it is. 
Whereas I can't really see that the Wii U does right now. That that's my problem. I mean, the Vita's got a lot of good games that you can get on that thing, man. Like if you bought a Vita now, there's like a massive back catalog of really good games to play. Not even just like good games. Like there are some great games on the Vita that just like deserve to be played. Whereas but- the Wii U, like we're we're a year in and you've got Legacy Undercover and no no we're half a year. Half a year, all right. So we've half a year in and we've got Legacy Undercover. Pretty much. But, but that was the point. We're talking about how the consoles from Nintendo always have a crap first year. So we're just trying mm. to open up and hope that the second year going forward. I mean, what what have we got announced? I mean, they've announced quite a few good games coming up, right? Like Mario Kart, a new Mario Land game, um, the Zelda HD. Um... It's the Sonic. Oh, the Sonic's multi-platform, isn't it? The Sonic Lost World will be Nintendo exclusive, so it'll run on Wii U, and there'll be a 3DS version. Oh, there so, we go. oh well, they, there you go then. There's the first like killer app exclusive. Then, ben, Sonic. can I just touch on something you mentioned? You said how the Wii U's expensive console, um, or it's too high a price. The Vita's a very similar price, and it's been out longer. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it comes down. To, it comes down to like what you prefer, though, man. Because to me, like, to me, I, I think yeah, that the Vita is better than the Wii U, though personally, like. In terms of its versatility and the experiences it can offer, like I would say the Vita is probably better. But again, that's just me being biased because I love the Vita. <laughs> you know, you can mute yourself, Janny. Yeah, I went to hit mute and I missed and I hit hang up. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. But yeah, my point is um, the Vita has been out longer and it also, sorry, that's what I was going to say. It's expensive to start with and you need to buy expensive uh, memory as well. Which makes it, you know, I, I don't think you can throw say the, the Wii U expen- uh, is a too high a price when you've got a handheld console that's a very similar price. Um, so that, that's all I was going to say about that. But yeah, I think going back to on topic, I do think it will it will get stronger as it goes on. The Wii U. Undoubtedly, I mean, once once you see the big hit in Nintendo franchises coming out, that thing will pick up steam. There's no two ways about it. Okay, cool. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to go over? This... We did mention Tales of Exilia 2, didn't we? Yeah, I spoke about it. You uh, briefly, yeah. you didn't. You definitely didn't have a fan wank in the chat, though. You just. I don't yeah. need to, man. I already spoke about it. I, I don't know anything about it. What am I supposed to say? I'm excited for it. It's a new Tales game. Tales of Exilia 1 isn't out here until next month, and I want to play well, that. Well, I just, I just pre-ordered it from Amazon. There we go. For £34. <laughs> <laughs> um... Just no, that's not fair, right? He fucking before we started this podcast, he was like, "Oh, you've allocated ten minutes for this, but you've just got to sit and listen to me wank." And then you literally just said its name and then carried on. Glossed over yeah. it because I mentioned what, what you know, yeah. I literally know nothing about the game. I wanted to hear you come for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'll make up a story if you want. Um. Yeah. By the way, I. Uh... Next week, I think I want to talk about an update with the problems I've had with the Vita Mega Pack. And, oh uh, yeah, because have you, Sony... still not, have you still not had anything come on with it yet? Uh, there has been a small update, but I'll, I want I'll go through it all next week because I'll probably You're chronicle should... the entire story. Yeah, oh, yeah there's just not alone in it. It seems to be quite big. There seems to be a lot of it happening. Yeah, and uh, Sony's customer service is a lot to be desired. So, But yeah, well, we'll talk about that next week because um, hopefully it'll be sorted by then. And if it's not, then I shall be ranting for 10 minutes. Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Anything yeah. else anyone wants to go through? No, piss off. No? All right, thanks. Um, <laughs> well, if you want to get in contact with us, it's GSC underscore games on Twitter. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me personally, it's xwgxlauchi on Twitter. Uh, if you want to contact Johnny, it's j i y o n i underscore d e s u. Cool. If you want to get in contact with Jamie, it's at Michael Sheen. At Michael Sheen, you heard it here first. If you want to, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie underscore Connolly. J a i m e. As you're gonna do. Yeah, I can spell. And uh, if you want to get in contact with Janny, it's G5PAG. G5PAG. Awesome stuff. Well, uh, how long have we been running for? I don't even think we've been like running that long today. An hour, three hours. Three hours. <laughs> it's like a sucky small podcast. Sorry, people. Hope That's you enjoyed right. it anyway. 
Yeah, I did. Like, put it down. Why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's worse when I'm editing it, listening to better podcasts. Stop trying to pad. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just trying to pad it out now? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Uh, thanks. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks to everyone for listening. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.